Hi, I'm Joe Garagiola. You probably confused me with Tom Cruise, but I'm taller than he is. I'm Joe Garagiola, and don't you go anywhere because Profiles is coming up, and I'm the Profile. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Marley Hall. Today's guest is famed broadcaster Joe Garagiola. Joe is one of the most recognized names in baseball and a familiar voice and face to millions of fans who followed his career on the diamond and in the broadcast booth. After a short break, we'll join our host Mickey Burns as he welcomes the popular Joe Garagiola to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. Joe Garagiola spent nine years as a catcher in the major leagues, followed by 30 years as a broadcaster. In his latest book titled Just Play Ball, Joe takes a fresh look at what's right with baseball at a time when books about our national pastime are focusing exclusively on steroids and performance-enhancing drugs. So let's join our host, Mickey Burns, on location from Ashford and Simpson Sugar Bar in the heart of New York City as he welcomes the personable Joe Garagiola to Profiles. Joe Garagiola, welcome to our show, Profiles. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you. Pleasure meeting you. Glad uh, to be a profile. Yeah, and, and for one of baseball's greatest ambassadors for many, many years. And currently celebrating uh, the release of your latest book, it's not your first, uh, called Just Play Ball. It's a book that offers a fresh look at what's right with baseball. And, and you also uh, are taking a fresh slant on the positive side of baseball. At a time when almost every book that's written is either on steroids or on growth supplements. Uh, why did you decide to go the positive route? Well, I got tired of reading about steroids. If, if a guy is using them, do something about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, quit mm -hmm. talking about it. Do something about it. I mean, uh, as recently as the last couple of days, Barry Bonds is still being investigated. I don't want to hear about Barry Bonds being investigated. I want to see that great swing. Mm -hmm. I want to see him hit the ball. And 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 I got. I found myself constantly saying. Why don't these guys just play ball? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Willie Mays had the right idea. Willie yeah. said, baseball, when they throw it, I hit it. When they hit it, I catch it. It's a simple game. It, it really is, but oh, do we complicate it. We sure do. Uh, now, your life in baseball included nine seasons as a player uh, for St. Louis Pirates, Cubs, and the New York Giants, followed by 30 years as a broadcaster. <laughs> The combination involves a lot of memories for you, doesn't it? Oh, tremendous memories. I mean, the thing that knocks me out is uh, that some people come up and they'll say, oh, I remember you from Sail of the Century. Yeah. You know, here I was uh, getting known for selling a refrigerator for $9 yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. I said, wait a minute, I played in the World Series, lady, you know? But uh, it's wonderful that people recognize you because it, it goes with the turf. And, and I've had a great, great ride. I'm telling you, I cannot complain. Uh, Tonight show, today shows, Sunday show, uh, game shows, dog shows. Can you believe well, that? Well, you revolutionized the Westminster dog show. You're the popularity zoomed after you became its, its, yeah, its I don't uh, know about broadcaster. That. Did your nine years in the major leagues help you as a broadcaster? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because uh, that's the only thing that the former athlete brings to the booth, if he remains a player. Uh -huh, I mean uh -huh. by that, I remember working with Phil Rizzuto, and what a delight that was with him. And one day he talked about uh, uh, they executed the double play. We went in the commercial. I said, Phil, when you made a double play, did you go in and tell Coleman or whoever was playing second base, we executed the double play? He said, no, why? I said, what did you say? So we made the double, double play. play. Right. I said, that's the way you talk. I said, you cannot compete with Mal Allen. Mal Allen was a wordsmith. Vince yes. Scully, yes. a wordsmith. Uh, we have one edge, and that's it. We were there. We know what it's like to take a third strike uh, in the clutch, because a lot of people say, well, if we'd only swing at the ball. Yeah. How did he do that? How, yeah. how could he not swing at that? That's you know? right, and, and you give your reason. So, Oh, it helped me considerably. Now, I did want to mention that the forward in the book, 
was written by your lifelong friend, <laughs> Yogi Berra. And for our fans out there, interesting to know that he grew up right across the street from you uh, in an Italian-American neighborhood in St. Louis known as The Hill. Right. And that block since has been named Hall of Fame Place. Well, there were... Yogi and I, I lived at 5446, he lived at 5447, and, and I, I don't remember a day not knowing Yogi, okay? <laughs> and people say, well, what was he like? I said the same way. He's a wonderful, uh, sensitive kind of a guy who, when he says things, I mean, he is not funny. I say that, but he says things funny. Right. When he's, he'll right. say something, you walk about three steps and you say, what do you say? I mean, like the first sentence in his foreword. <laughs> Before I say anything, I want to tell you something. <laughs> you know, I couldn't believe it. I'll give you one. Go ahead. When we were kids, we were driving this jalopy car, like all yeah. kids had, right? Yeah. And this was Yogi's time to drive. It was winter time. It was icy. He skidded, hit a fire plug, all right? The water's <laughs> coming on like Old Faithful. Cops are there and everything. <laughs> when it was kind of settled down, I said, Yogi, what happened? He said, well, it was icy, and the horn didn't work. <laughs> I said, the horn didn't work? What do you expect? Blow the horn, the fire hydrant's going to move? <laughs> but that's, that's it. That, that's priceless. Uh, Yogi mentions in the book that your childhood relationship with him really hit home during the 1964 World Series okay. when he was managing the Yankees against the Cardinals, and you were up in the booth broadcasting the game. At that time, for you, what were your emotions? Well, it was the most poignant game in my career because uh, I didn't realize it till it was about the sixth inning, and okay. I looked down and I saw Yogi, and all of a sudden it dawned on me, what a great country this is. Our oh. parents didn't speak English, and here we were. Yogi was managing the Yankees. I was up there broadcasting, and I said to myself, what a country. this is unbelievable. And, and I, I really, I, I got goose pimply over it because it was a tremendous moment for me. And still is, I bet. Oh, yeah, I still think is. about that. They, you know, I played in the 46 World Series, and that's a dream for every kid. Uh, we beat the Red Sox and all that. Uh, that's a long time ago, yeah, by yeah, the way, yeah. 46. I can't believe it. But uh, the most poignant moment really was uh, the Yankee thing. And you're very modest and always have been about your baseball career. Well, but people keep me modest. Yeah. Let me talk about the 46. Here's one quick story. I got Go the World Series ring. Okay? Yes, how many can say that? Okay, yes. I wear it because I, I, I earned it. I feel like I earned it. Yes. And so I sit in the stands because I wasn't going to call my Joe for tickets when he was general manager. So I'm sitting next to the guy, and I talk to everybody. I talk to the foul pole, the groundskeeper, whoever, oh, you know. So one night this uh, a guy was sitting next to me, nice guy. His daughter comes, and she brings three of her classmates, all college kids. Sure. Beautiful one, and she said, uh, Mr. Cargiola, would you show my friend your ring? Oh, certainly. I'll <laughs> yeah. show her. She said, you have to take it off. I said, oh, no. Uh, listen, and, and she gives it to her girlfriend. Her girlfriend looks at it, and, of course, I'm all puffed up. You know, yeah, sure, 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 sure. And she says, 1946? Whoa, that's old. Whoa, you know, right there. So then she says, that was one. The second shot she gave me was, did you ever play with Babe Ruth? Zeppo, <laughs> she gets me again, right? Yeah, that, that was in the 20s. You, you tell her that. Well, you know, yeah. you know what I told her? I said, you know, I only had one chance to play with Babe Ruth, but I had to go to some play with a big tall guy named Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Back in the 70s, Garagiola went from broadcasting NBC's Baseball Game of the Week to NBC's Today program with Barbara Walters, Brian Gumbel, and Katie Couric. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with much more on Profiles after these important announcements. Welcome back to Profiles. I'm Marley Hall. Joe Garagiola is best known for his almost 30-year association with NBC. Besides covering baseball, he also hosted numerous game shows like He Said, She Said, Sale of the Century, Strike It Rich, and Joe Garagiola's Memory Game. Now back to Mickey Burns with the likable Joe Garagiola. Before we move on from the 46 World Series, you did, you did bat uh, 316 in that series. You earned that ring, Joe, and went four for five. Uh, with three RBIs in game four. But most important, the statistic about that series in 46 was that you had more hits in that series than the legendary Ted Williams. Yeah, but he hit the ball hard and got some tough luck. I've always, I'm not defending him just like I don't defend Pesky. Pesky yeah, gets yeah, yeah. blamed for that play holding the ball. He didn't hold the ball. He did what any other shortstop would do. Williams, I mean, he hit some bullets. Terry Moore made two great catches. Okay. Uh, Shane Dees. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. oh, when Williams was around, I did an interview with him. Every time I talked to him, I'd say, hey, Ted, 
Let me talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he loved that. Oh, yeah. oh that He hurt. almost come out of the chair to grab right. you. That